As the release date for the Macintosh rapidly approaches, Jobs never compromises his vision. He drives his team harder and harder. I remember one of the engineers was working on what was called the Macintosh Finder, and he'd been working for probably 36 hours straight. Comes in, hands Steve the latest version of the Finder, and he said, I think I've got it this time. And Steve said, is it the best work you can do? He said, well, it may not be the best, but I really am proud of this. He's, he said, I don't care, throw it back at him. He said, go do it again and bring it back when it's the best you can do. In October 1983, a brazen Jobs takes the stage at a meeting of Apple's sales staffers and mocks his biggest competitor. IBM wants it all and is aiming its guns on its last obstacle to industry control, Apple. Will Big Blue dominate the entire computer industry? The entire information age? Was George Orwell right? The lights dim, and Jobs plays a $1.5 million Macintosh television commercial made by feature film director Ridley Scott. We shall prevail. 1984 airs only once during Super Bowl 18, but it wins critical acclaim and plenty of buzz for Apple's latest product. That groundbreaking 1984 ad, probably the most famous ad in TV history. Two days after the commercial airs, at Apple's shareholder meeting at De Anza College, Jobs waits backstage. On the other side of the curtain, hundreds take their seats. It's time to unveil the Macintosh, and Steve Jobs' reputation hangs in the balance. He's standing backstage, and I'm the only person with him, and he is white as a sheet. His hands are shaking, and he said, I'm so nervous. The minute Steve walked out on the stage, he was transformed. I'd like to let Macintosh speak for itself. He had perfect poise, perfect timing. It was one of the most memorable Steve Jobs performance you've ever seen. Hello, I am Macintosh. The true is great to get out of that bag. In 1984, we had a terrific year. The Mac got off to a tremendous success. It was well positioned and Steve and I got along great. But Jobs' bravado can't sway consumers beyond the initial fanfare. In 1985, the sales of the Macintosh started to fall off. The critics were now saying, it's not innovative, it's a toy. It'll never be as taken seriously. With hindsight, you, know, you could say we had an incomplete product. <laughs> there wasn't too much software. And so, you know, without software, what do you do with a personal computer? Jobs and Scully clash over the company's future. Scully wants to funnel resources into the Apple II in order to extend its life. Jobs strongly disagrees. We felt that was looking backwards, not looking forwards. And so we had a serious fallout. Tension between Scully and Jobs boils over, and Scully gives the board an ultimatum. It's either him or Jobs. The board chooses Scully and removes Jobs from the Macintosh division. What the board wanted Steve to do was go off and create the next thing after Macintosh. He stayed on as chairman, and then he eventually went off and resigned. Scully and Jobs haven't spoken since.